Success leaves clues. Follow what the successful people are doing and you're gonna get the same results as the successful people are getting. Welcome to the stage, Nicholas Barely. How do I start to try? What can I do? What's the next thing I can do? The most unselfish thing a person could do is expand. No other option besides hard work. How they can live this three-dimensional lifestyle. Yo YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Nicholas Barely. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys five success habits that you can literally do leaving here that the top people, the top entrepreneurs, the top athletes in the world use to rise above their competition and you're gonna be able to do it as well. I'm Nicholas Barely, this is my channel. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. If you like this video, make sure to like the dang video please and ring that bell. That's gonna get you notifications. When things go live, you're gonna get a notification on your phone for something that's actually gonna disrupt the day in a positive way. We all know that there's things coming at us in a negative way all the time. We have notifications on our phone and things distracting us. Yet imagine if you left with more motivation, more excitement, more skill sets, things that have equipped you to be a better businessman because that is what we are here to do. With that, let's get into the five success habits that I've learned from interviewing over 300 multimillionaires, Navy SEALs, professional athletes, et cetera, that you're gonna walk away with freaking massive value from. Let's get started. Step number one is coming up with a GPS. This is something I've seen every successful person do. Somehow they know the end destination. Think about this, when you have Siri on your phone, and I'm not talking about Siri, I'm not talking about the old school GPS systems, yet when you think about them, what's the first thing that you do? You type in the address, the place that you're looking to go, you drop the pin, and based on the drop of the pin, Siri, Google, all of a sudden figures out the best routes to be able to get there. They show you the paths of least resistance. Because imagine this, you wake up every morning, you're just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it to New York. You kind of know where the destination is, you know the direction that you're going, but you have no clue which way to go, what steps to be able to take. So step number one is finding out what's the setting up the GPS, but figuring out of setting up the GPS, where exactly are you looking to go? Yet not just knowing where you're gonna go, because you can wake up every day, drive, get stuck in cul-de-sacs, you don't know what freeways to get on, and you could end up in a completely different city and not even know it. So the first thing I've seen of these successful people is that they've clearly laid out not just the vision of where they're looking to go with their body, with their business, with their uh, the accomplishments, the achievements that they have. They have not just looked at the place they wanna go, they've actually put the plan in place by hiring or getting the best mentors and people around them, studying the people that have gone before them to figure out what's the best way to get to this destination I'm looking for. They plug it into the system, they know where they're going, and they know the path that they're gonna to take to be able to get there. So right now, inside of your business or life, figure out what is the place or the destination that I'm looking for. And the second thing is what is the plan, the proven plan that I can put in place so that I can actually get there most effectively and efficiently. And usually that's from looking from people that have already done it. Imagine someone's driven to New York City and now all you do is just take that same route that they did because they've already done it before. Step number two of every successful person habit that they have is powering up. Again, this isn't powering up your phone. This isn't just powering up the freaking Epic Studio. This is about being personally empowered, something that floods from the inside out. What I've found from the most successful people in the world, not just financially, because we all know that there's many people out there, billionaires that are completely unhappy. These are people that are not satisfied, even though they have tons of money, tons of material resources. There's literally nothing limited that they can buy, yet for some reason they can't put a smile on their face. Yet there's kids in Africa that legitimately, if you just give them the basic needs, they'll light up with a smile, with happiness. So what's the way that we could actually create true success through powering up? What I found is that in every single person's life, in every successful person's life, there's three core areas they cannot outsource, their health. No one's gonna eat for them, no one's gonna drink for them, and without these basic necessities, they will not live. They might be able to stay alive, but yet they will not thrive without uh, fully going all in and understanding and transforming this area of their life inside of the health. This is breathing, drinking, sleeping, eating, exercise. Number one, that's health. The second thing is relationships. Inside of every person's life, there's relationships, not just in business, yet to have a successful family, to have a successful dynamic in a marital relationship, there's the, the relationship that's closest to you, which is between husband and wife, closest relationship. So that's number one. Second one is family. Third is people that are like family. Fourth are friends. And then fifth is gonna be your network and people that you know. 
So inside of that, it's prioritizing the family, right? Like looking at these are the three core areas that I can add outsource. The last one's gonna be the business. What I saw from studying all these very successful people is that they've not only put, in, put together a goal and a focus on health, relationships and business and there's obviously different dynamics in that yet what they've done on top of that is they prioritize them in an order that gives them massive momentum meaning i was actually watching a story from a very successful guy named cole hatter phenomenal mentor one of my first business mentors and he was talking about the doing doing 75 hard which is basically doing two workouts every single day one outdoors one indoors drinking a gallon of water a day drinking reading 10 pages the biggest hardest part of it is definitely the physical exercise he said that through that he's getting these daily wins that are just making him feel powerful and confident so notice what happened while most people out there they want to show you that success is just achieving one thing what happens is that those things can be very fleeting let's say it's money a lot of guys want to go out there they think if i just make more money everything will be better i thought this many times in my life and, and sometimes I, i'm like man that would be absolutely perfect make more money it'll solve all the problems and what i found is that when people just are going after that one thing if they're not getting enough of it they end up sacrificing and sabotaging every area of their life just to be able to get that one thing yet they'll never be happy because they've sacrificed so much along the way and so inside of that, they've not only figured out how to put priority and, and a place of importance on these different areas, they've also gone out there and prioritized them in order of health, because if you don't show up powerfully in your relationship and your business, it's not gonna work. Second, relationship, because you'd never sacrifice your relationship to grow a business. And third, business or impact. Success habit number three is gonna be the daily ritual. And I do not mean that people go out there and just do the same exact daily ritual, but I remember when I was cleaning carpets every single day, I was constantly trying to build the business. And one of the things that I always catch myself doing is I'd start looking at all these different things that I could do. I'd start looking at, I need to get on social media. I need to post on Instagram three times a day. I need to use the correct hashtags. I need to you know, go and engage with all these people's posts. And I just felt like every single day, I was going out there and doing just all these activities. And one of the things that changed me the most was actually the BDB ritual that we developed over years and years of working with hundreds of thousands of men. And ultimately I created that after interviewing all these successful people, figuring out how do they constantly do the top things every day that move the needle the most. And one of the ways that I saw that they did that simply that you could leave here and do with daily rituals is every single day sitting down and figuring out what did I get done yesterday and what didn't I get done yesterday. On top of that, at the end of the day, looking at what did I get done and where did I win that day and where am I like procrastinating, not getting things done? What's on my calendar today? And what are the things that I want to put on my calendar that will move the needle the most based on number one point, which is having the vision in mind, the place that you're going. And so every single day, what's not tracked cannot be changed. What's not tracked can't be measured. What's measured cannot be changed. If that's true, the first one is we're going to track. What are the things, the successful habits are first tracking the things that we're doing every single day and measuring it. What's the type of results that it's creating? And that way that we can change it and figure out what needs to be changed in the future. I found that every successful person I found has always looking at what they're doing, creating a habit out of it, but actually creating a habit out of actually tracking and measuring the things that they're doing so that they can be changed. You're not just running around like a chicken with your head cut off, yet you're actually going out there and being effective with the things that you do. Success habit number four is sharpening the sword. There's so many people out there that go out and they have immediate success. They create a business and they stay exactly the same. Think about how many times you go shopping in a strip mall and you see that there's a pho restaurant or you see that there's a Thai food restaurant or you see that there's a dry cleaner. When was the last time that you saw that type of business change? It's been very traditional for a very long time because what happens, the worst part of success is a little bit. People get often comfortable like you look at the year 2020, COVID hit, and people say out there that like the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poor and the wealth gap, the divide is getting bigger and bigger. Of course, look at the people that are going out there that have consistently sharpened their sword, that understand how money works, and they're going out there consistently changing, consistently innovating, consistently pivoting with the times. Why? Because success leaves clues. Follow what the successful people are doing and you're gonna get the same results as the successful people are getting. Sharpen your sword, especially when it comes to things like sales, like marketing, especially in the area of business. You wanna sharpen your sword in those areas so that you can stay on top when you pivots are necessary. You're the one that's sharpening your sword, consistently investing in education, skill sets that matter the most, and doubling down on your strengths. And success habit number five is commitment. And coupled with this, I wanna throw in there 
always going for first. Like if you're a person that's selling coaching, training, education, you should be hiring and getting more training, more education, more coaching than anyone else. Yet commitment is something that I've seen is I just couldn't leave it out. And, and even though a side conversation is the fact that we go first as leaders, inside of going first is this thing called commitment. Definition of commitment is doing what you said you were gonna do after the feeling you set it in has already passed. Meaning that when you're feeling good, you're gonna make a commitment. You're warm in your house, and you're like, man, I'm gonna go to the gym tomorrow. And oftentimes what happens is the next day, we don't feel the same way as we did that night. We're not as comfortable, things aren't as easy, we don't have all the time in the world, and so all of a sudden we start breaking the commitments that we make. See, on average, the average person will keep a commitment that they make to other people. Why is this? Because there's accountability. If I say to you, hey, I'm gonna drop this YouTube video at this time, man, I gotta get this done because I promised all those people out there. Yet, if no one knows about it, it's just me. Oh, I'm going to make that YouTube video tomorrow. It's very easy just to be like, oh, I don't need to do that. The problem with that is the worst person that you can give up committing to is yourself. Because then all of a sudden your subconscious mind now distrusts you going forward. So you start saying you're going to do things. Your subconscious mind starts saying, no, you're not. No, you're not. And then all of a sudden you have a split personality with yourself where you're acting like you believe in yourself, but deep down inside, your body will not believe in you. Commitment is something that I've seen exercised by the most successful people in the world. Again, doing what they said they were gonna do after the feeling they set it in has passed. I remember the first time that I saw this was actually working out with Navy SEALs. I saw this guy fall on his face during a workout. He finished the workout. I thought I would go pick him up and take him to the finish line and be that guy like in the Olympics that helped him limp across the line. And he was like, don't touch me. Finish the workout and I'm like, all right, that was weird, but I didn't say anything about it. Same guy. I watched him walk his dog one day. He's skateboarding, uncoordinated, goes off a curb, falls on his face. Again, I don't know what up with him with faces and hitting concrete. Hit it again, he's bleeding. He finished walking his dog, he came back, done. And I started thinking, why are you doing this? And he was so afraid of not finishing what he committed to do. He's more afraid of that than the fear of being hurt or the fear of bleeding or the fear of any of these other things. He said, I'm gonna finish what I set out to do and then I'm gonna decide whether I wanna do that thing again or I'll move on to the next thing that I wanna do. And though not every single person out there is a Navy SEAL, how can we take that ourselves and apply it into our life and be like, man, if I'm gonna set out to do this strategy, if I say I'm gonna work out, if I say I'm gonna meet this person, if I say I'm gonna launch this plan, I'm gonna do it after the feeling that I set it in has passed and I'm gonna get a result and I'm gonna decide next time, am I gonna shift that? Am I gonna do that again? Because you don't need to always say yes. And, and ultimately go out there and be like, I'm gonna finish this before I move on to the next thing. So that concludes the five success habits that I've seen from the top Navy SEALs, the top athletes, the top entrepreneurs, interviewing over 300 successful entrepreneurs, speaking on stages with all these phenomenal people, dissecting their lives and looking at what are the core things that drive them that you could take today and start applying commitment, going out there and doing what you said you were gonna do after the feeling you said it in his past, that's what we left it on. Oh man, that, that literally transformed my entire life, talking about transforming entire lives. My book, Modern Day Businessman, actually just came out on Audible. If you have not grabbed the audio version yet, do it for me. That was stressful, that was difficult. I read my entire book. As you know, I graduated the 1.8 GPA and build a business even with that education which I talk about in the book, yet graduating the 1.8 GPA, you don't read out loud all the time. Very difficult, got it done, it's on Audible, you go check it out, and if you just want the free copy of the digital version, you can head over to nicholasbarely.com slash ebook, 100% free, I give you a copy of my book. I appreciate you and I know that you're gonna love this. Again, if you took something away from this video that you're gonna apply, go ahead and drop it in the comments below and I will see you on the next video.